our next topic in chapter 18 is this how the concentration of solutions that we use in a galvanic cell can affect the voltage of the cell. So before we get into this, let me just kind of talk, let's not forget about um, the big picture here. So we're talking about galvanic cells where we have two half reactions of a redox reaction that are physically separated, but they are connected to each other by a wire. And uh, because they're connected to each other by this wire, the electrons from one side of the redox reaction, one half reaction, they can move across the wire to the other half reaction. That movement of electrons generates electricity, which we can measure using a voltmeter or we can connect to something like a light bulb, um, power that light bulb. And this is really you know, the, the fundamental principle behind a battery. So, so far, what we've really been focusing on is learning how to calculate the voltage that's being given off by these galvanic cells under standard conditions, meaning that the solutions that we're using in these half reactions are one molar solutions because that's standard. Uh, and then we can calculate the voltage based on what chemicals do we have in each half of the cell and the difference between the potential of, of the two different solutions, and that's what dictates E cell. If we are wanting to really fine tune the voltage of a galvanic cell, um, to not be restricted by just straight up the difference between the two when we're running them under standard conditions at one molar. So if we wanted to fine tune that voltage, we could change the concentrations of these solutions. We could make them higher or we could make them lower than one molar. And this is gonna have an effect on the voltage of the cell. So that's what we're gonna be talking about in 18.5. Um, and before we really get into it, we have to kind of derive a math equation that we're going to use called the Hertz equation. And the, the derivation is going to come from a combination of some of the stuff that we did last quarter and that we were looking at in the last section. So in the last section, we were using this relationship, the standard Gibbs free energy is equal to negative RT ln K, and that came from, from 162 from last quarter. And we were also combining that with um, the way that we would calculate Gibbs free energy for a redox reaction, negative NFE cell. So we were looking at these two equations together. Another equation that we did in 162 when we were doing Gibbs free energy is this equation right here, the non-standard delta G is equal to the delta G standard plus RTLNQ. So in, in this equation, this again, this would be our non-standard delta G, and it could be non-standard for any reason. Maybe the temperature isn't right, maybe the concentrations of the solutions are not one molar, who knows. Delta G standard, this is our standard condition delta G. This would be the one that we would look up in the in the data table and we would calculate it using Hess's law, products minus reactants. And then R, as you know, is our gas constant. We're going to write that number down in a bit. And temperature in Kelvin, whatever it might be. And Q is this thing, remember, we call the reaction quotient, um, which is very similar to K. So it is calculated just the exact same way that you would calculate an equilibrium constant K. Products over reactants raised to their stoichiometric coefficients, leaving out solids, leaving out liquids. The difference between Q and K is that uh, when we know that our system is in equilibrium and we do this calculation, products over reactants, we call it a K. When we don't know if the system is in equilibrium or if we know that it's not in equilibrium, then we call it a Q. So that, that's the only difference between the two. Otherwise, they're calculated the same way. So using this 
this equation right here that we're just remembering from last a quarter, from last quarter, what I want to do is plug in delta G standard for a voltaic cell. I want to plug that into this new delta G non-standard equation. So I'm going to say delta G non-standard is equal to N F negative N F E cell plus R T L N of Q. And again, that in that situation, I am just simply substituting negative N F E cell for delta G standard. That's all and that shows up right there in the equation. So that's all that I've done. And then I'm gonna do one more thing. I'm gonna say, okay, so, so coming off of this equation that we have right here, basing myself off of this equation right here, if I had, I'm gonna do the right side first, if I had a non-standard cell, so maybe the concentrations were not one molar, it's not standard, so we can't use that symbol right there. If I had a non-standard cell and I did this calculation, that would just give me a non-standard delta G, um, and, and it does. So what I'm gonna do now is plug the non-standard NFE cell in for the non-standard delta G. So I'm gonna get another version of this equation, negative NFE non-standard E cell equals negative NFE standard cell plus RT LNQ. Now there's a, a lot of, there's a lot of terms in this equation. There's a lot of stuff going on in this equation. It looks pretty cumbersome, but we're gonna simplify it. We're gonna, we're gonna clean it up really nice. So what I am going to do for starters is divide every bit of this equation by negative NF, just negative NF. And so that will give me E cell non-standard because the negative cancels, the N cancels, the F cancels. So I'm left with E cell is equal to E standard cell minus RT LNQ over NF. So this already, this equation looks a whole lot better. And in this equation, uh, which we were kind of, we were using something kind of similar to this yesterday, we know that R, we know the value of R is 8.3145 joules per mole Kelvin. It's a constant. It's one of our versions of the ideal gas constant. We know that F is Faraday's constant, 96,500 joules per volt mole. And we know that N is the number of moles of electrons that are being exchanged in the reaction. What else do we have in here? We have E cell, cell, which is cathode minus anode. And we're gonna calculate it the same way if it's standard or non-standard, it's gonna be cathode minus anode no matter what. And we also have Q, products over reactants. So those are all of our terms. Um, so some of these things are just straight up constants like R and F no matter what, those are always gonna be the same number. If we restrict ourselves to only operating at 25 degrees C, which is not unreasonable because that's, that's pretty close to room temperature. So if we, can, if we just um, force ourselves to always be at 25 degrees C, then our temperature is gonna be a constant as well. And so we can work out the math R times the temperature at 25 degrees C divided by F, and we can just get rid of three of the variables in this equation. And so that is gonna give us, I'm gonna do a different color, E cell non-standard equals E standard cell 
minus, and this number is going to look familiar to you, 0 0.0257 over n times the natural log of q. And again, the 0 0.0257 is coming from doing the math r times t divided by f when our temperature is 25 degrees C. And just like we saw yesterday, we have two different versions of this equation depending on which button you want to hit on your calculator. We can also do E cell non-standard equals E standard cell minus 0 0.0592 over N times the LOG log of Q. This beautiful equation, or these beautiful equations together, these are called the Nernst equations. And these are the equations that we will use when we are working with a non-standard cell and we want to calculate the voltage of that cell. So before we practice actually using the Nernst equation, the first thing that we're going to practice is just setting up the Nernst equation to use. So we're going to write a Nernst equation or the Nernst equation for this particular redox reaction to VO2 plus aqueous plus 4H plus aqueous plus Fe solid, which makes 2VO2 plus aqueous 2H2O liquid and Fe2 plus aqueous. So again, we're just trying to set up the Nernst equation. I'm going to start by copying it. E cell non-standard equals E standard cell minus 0 0.0257 over N times the natural log of Q. So when we're talking about setting up or writing the Nernst equation, what we're really focusing on is filling in this Q part. We're going to calculate E standard cell the way that we've done all chapter. That's going to be pretty easy for you. And as we calculate or look up the data for calculating E cell, we're also going to be able to get N from looking at those half reactions. The tricky part here is really focusing on the Q. And we haven't done that for a while. We've, when we have done it recently, we've really just been focusing on acid-base stuff which is quite a bit more simple because all the stoichiometric coefficients are one and we don't have very much stuff that we have to leave out. So here is our refresher with the Q. Remember, it's going to be our products first. So we're focusing on this side and we are only focusing on things that are aqueous and gas. We're leaving out our solids and our liquids. And so we have this VO2 plus that's aqueous and we're going to raise it to its stoichiometric coefficient which is a 2. And then we also have Fe2 plus a coefficient of 1. So now we're going to look over on our reactant side. We have VO plus aqueous and we have hydrogen ions H plus aqueous. We're going to leave out the iron because it's a solid. So we have VO2 plus, VO2 plus to the 2, and we have H plus to the 4. And so now we have our Q ready. We can, once we know, if we knew some information, we'd be able to plug in concentrations for all four of these things. And really, honestly, if, we're, if we really want to be clever here, we can take a look at the reaction, we could definitely figure out N because we have one really good clue for us right here, and that's the iron going to iron 2 plus. It's a little bit trickier for us to see N if we're looking at the vanadium stuff because there's oxygen involved in there. But when we're looking at just the iron to iron 2 plus, we can see that that's definitely a loss of two electrons. 
Uh, and so we could go ahead and we could fill that part into the Nernst equation as well. And if that's not very apparent to you, that's okay, because when you were um, going to proceed to the table of half reactions so that you could calculate E cell, when you moved on to that part, you would definitely be able to see in the half reactions how many electrons were being exchanged, and you would get in that way. So if you can't see that, don't worry about it, because we'll get it off the data tables.